Good evening, everyone. Let's take our songbooks to page number 76 tonight. Page number 76. He's so great, and I'm so small. Jesus holds me lest I fall. Number 76 tonight. Number 76. Page number 76. He's so great, and I'm so small. Jesus holds me lest I fall. simple reminder amen number 89 number 89 all the way my savior leads me number 89 page number 89 all the way my savior leads me what am i to ask beside can i doubt his tender mercy Announcements this evening before we stand and ask the blessing on the service tonight. Remember the Fall Harvest Jubilee Camp Meeting here starting September 29th through the October 1st. And also remind you of the Ava Tent Meeting starting uh, this coming week, 14th Monday at 6.30 there at the City Park just right off of Johnson Avenue there. So be much in prayer uh, for that. Let's all stand tonight, open the service in prayer. Then after prayer, we'll have a time of greeting. And we'll come back and sing our last hymn for the evening, all right? Heavenly Father, we're so grateful to be in your house tonight. We're thankful, Heavenly Father. Lord, for the message we heard today, thank you, Lord, for our pastor. We thank you, Lord, your blessing. And Lord, thank you for his stand. And Lord, I pray, Heavenly Father, Lord, that we will stand also. And Lord, that we will not fail or falter. And Lord, I pray, Heavenly Father, Lord, that we will, Lord, when the tides come rolling in, God, we'll just keep looking unto the rock that does not move. And we thank you again for who you are in Jesus' name. Amen. Turn around and tell someone, I'm glad, I'm glad you're here.
Book of Psalm Books at page number 524. Page number 524 tonight in your Psalm Books. Saved by the blood of the crucified one. Page number 524. Page number 524. Saved by the blood of the crucified one. Samuel chapter 23. I want to preach a message that maybe will help us a little bit as we move into this revival tomorrow night. Maybe be an encouragement to us. And uh, so appreciate everybody being out tonight. Second Samuel chapter 23. You know, uh, Eisenhower in World War II had some great generals that worked underneath him. Uh, Montgomery gave him a hard time all the time. Uh, Patton would tear things up. Yeah. Old Patton, they, they about had to pull the supplies back from him just to keep him from tearing all Europe up. Yeah. Old Patton, he said, if you'll give me the food and the gasoline, I'll, I'll be in Berlin in a week or two. Yeah. And, uh, but then there was Omar Bradley. And Omar Bradley was more calm and deliberate and cautious and careful and and uh, Montgomery, I think he just wanted to be Ike. He wanted Ike's spot. But anyway, uh, he, uh, Ike had some good generals. And uh, in this passage of scripture, it's been preached like everything else in the Bible hundreds of times. I've preached some different messages on this. But tonight I want to preach a message of encouragement uh, to the church and specifically to the men that are called to preach in here and called to labor in the Lord in whatever way that might be. Tell you what let's do. As an old preacher up in Iowa, his name's Larry Brown, he's stand up, stand up for Jesus. Let's read the Bible tonight. <laughs> you soldiers of the cross. <laughs> Isn't that right? Yeah. That's the way he does it, you know. But anyway, I get tickled at it. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Because I'm going to preach tonight somewhat on the subject of standing. And so we're going to read some passages of scripture here and then We'll pray and you can be seated. Now, these be the last words of David. Boy, I tell you what, he's getting ready to move out and he's got some things he wants to say at the end. And I love this passage of scripture. David, the son of Jesse said, and the man who was raised up on high, the anointed of, God, of the God of Jacob and the sweet psalmist of Israel said, 
The spirit of the Lord spake by me and his word was in my tongue. The God of Israel said, the rock of Israel spake to me, he that ruleth over men must be just, ruling in the fear of God. And he shall be as the light of the morning. Boy, I tell you what, we need leaders like this. We need workers like this. He shall be as the light of the morning when the sun riseth, even a morning without clouds, as the tender grass springing out of the earth by clear shining after the rain. That's many morning. I, I like to get up before it gets light and I like to make my coffee. And go out there on the patio and wait, watch the sun come up. And just watch the sky. And a lot of mornings this year, uh, down through the grass after Karen's cut it, it looked like diamonds. It's dew. It's little, little, little dew drops on the grass. And it's just like coated with diamonds. It's so beautiful. And it's just a, you know, it's a good time of the day to just to talk, talk to God and get with God. And that's the picture here. And then he said in verse number five, although my house be not so with God, Yet hath he made with me an everlasting covenant. Amen. Ordered in all things. And look at that, underline it in your Bible. Sure. Amen. And uh, he said, for this is all my salvation. He said, God's covenant with me uh, through, his, through his Messiah. And all my desire, although he make it not to grow. But the sons of Belial shall be all of them as thorns thrust away because they cannot be taken with hands. But the man that shall touch them must be fenced with iron. Now I want you to that man that touches these guys is going to be fenced with iron and the staff of a spear. And they shall be utterly burned with fire in the same place. And now at this point after describing uh, this man that's uh, fenced with iron, he goes into a discussion of his mighty men that labored with him and fought with him. Uh, all the time of his kingship there and much of it. And uh, he, he gives these men honor and he realizes something that if God hadn't given him some mighty men along the road, it probably stuff wouldn't have happened that happened. Amen. Ain't none of us fighting the war by ourselves. Right. We all need each other. Yeah. And uh, I tell you, you know, uh, George Marshall and FDR could have set up there in the Pentagon in the White House and uh, all during World War II, but that didn't get the job done. I was telling somebody today that a lot of people don't know that when they hit D-Day and, and went through the hedgerows for several weeks there, bloody, bloody battles there after D-Day, a lot of men were killed. Uh, General Omar Bradley had designed and orchestrated and come up with what's called the breakout. And that was to get broken out of those hedgerows that they had them stopped in and head toward Paris and start sweeping across Europe. And uh, Omar, he came up with that plan. It was a wonderful plan, a good plan. But one of the things that happened in it, uh, they had the, the heavy bombers come in and they did the artillery to the Germans and getting the bombers come in. And when those bombers comes in, come in, they got messed up. They dropped bombs on, on our own troops and killed 700 and some soldiers and they never even fired a shot at the German. Hard yeah. And uh, I'm telling you, leadership is important and planning is important. We're getting ready to go into a revival meeting over here. And uh, I'll tell you something, don't think for a minute we're not going in and the devil ain't going to like what we're doing. Right. And he is fighting us, but he's fighting us in different ways. But tonight I just, I want to, I want to honor the people of this church that have been involved in the warfare and in the battle here through the preaching of this message, whether you've prayed, whether you went, whatever you've done. And I want you to realize tonight that it's important. Uh, he said in verse number eight, these be the names. Well, look, we're just going to stop praying. I'm just going to get to preaching. How about that? Lord, thank you for this great and wonderful account in the Bible. And I thank you, Lord, for David's heart that he didn't sit around there bragging on himself. That he recognized, God, that uh, there were some men that made things happen. And God, I tell you, I want to tell you tonight, I appreciate the men of this church and the ladies of this church who labor in so many ways to make things happen. So that folks can get it done and get out there. And Lord, just so many things that we couldn't do without. And Lord, you know, I've had calls from pastors over the years many times. And they asked me, how, Reggie, how do you get people to do anything? I, and Lord, the only thing I know, your spirit's just moved. That's all I know. And God, I don't know what you're even doing nowadays. I see all this going on, what I see in the movement of God. And people's lives and hearts being stirred. And God, I know you're just in our midst. And I want to thank you for it. But I want to thank you for people, Lord, who are willing to go and willing to labor and willing to fight in this great battle, Lord, uh, for righteousness in this land. And so, Lord, I pray, help me to preach tonight in Jesus' name and bless it to the hearts of these people. And I pray, God, tonight that you'd encourage them, 
Uh, Lord, that you would inspire them. God, that you would challenge them tonight. And uh, Lord, for your glory's sake, in Jesus' name, I pray. Now, as I said, you can be seated. Uh, uh, I want to preach a message of encouragement. A message, protect did I say you can be seated or whatever, or sit down or do run or lap? I don't care what you do. And uh, as I said, I want to kind of gear this toward the people of this church that do so many things to help us get the job done around here. There's, uh, we're going to look at these mighty men of, um, of uh, David. Eisenhower, before D-Day, wrote a message to all the troops. Now, I can't quote it to you right now. I, I might just put a shot at it. But basically, it was a me message of the importance of their mission, the value of their mission, and the criticalness for, for freedom and for the cause of right in, in the world. And he, that message inspired those men. And tonight, I just want to encourage tonight the, uh, the church in what we're doing. Uh, so let's take off down through here. And I, we're going to have, I hope we'll have a good time. And uh, you won't hurt you to laugh a little bit. And, you know, we're getting in America where you can't say anything without worrying about whether somebody's offended. And it makes me sick. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I'm a hillbilly and I don't get all bent out of shape. Now, I don't, if you call me a redneck, I'm not far enough south to be a redneck. But if you want to call me a redneck, I don't care. All right. And just have yourself a good time teasing me and aggravating me. And I ain't going to get all bent out of shape about it. But I tell you what, we need to enjoy ourselves. Now, he said in verse number eight, these be the names of the mighty men whom David had, the Tachmanite that sat in the seat, a chief among the captains. Now, this old boy, well, he was a chief among the captains and the same was a Dino. His name was a Dino. Well, you might think about naming your boy a Dino. I don't know any boy's name a Dino, but I, he's not a bad guy to name after. And I'm going to tell you why. I want you to look what he did. He said he lift up his spear against 800 whom he slew at one time. I think it wouldn't hurt you to name a boy a Dino. Amen. A boy that gets something done. You say, Reggie, what do you think about this guy? I'll tell you about old Dino. He rattled him. Amen. You know what we need to do as a church? We need to rattle this country. Amen. We need to, I'll tell you what, we don't need to be a church that comes here on Sunday morning and keeping the fish aquarium. We need to be out there and go fishing. Amen. And rattle up the, I'll tell you, a church ought to rattle the community. Oh, and Dino, I'll tell you, what, I guarantee when he got done with that crowd, 800 men killed, amen. they was rattled. <laughs> we need to rattle the devil, amen. We need to pray. We need to preach. We need to stand. We need to rattle the devil. I tell you, he rattled him. And I tell you what I also think about the Dino, he was reckless. He didn't care where he's swinging. He just boom, boom. The Bible said he lift up. The Bible, Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. There's a picture here of people preaching and getting the gospel of Jesus Christ out. And he lift up his spear and says he's he, against something. You know, you need to be against something. Those old boys said, you're against everything. Well, I'm against everything God's against. Amen. But I'm for a lot too. Amen. But he lift up his spear against 800. His spear, that's a picture of the word of God. The weapon of God. So he lifted up the Lord Jesus Christ, lifted up the word of God. And 800 men he slew at one time. Now, I want to tell you something. I like boxing. How many knows old Tyson Fury? Anybody know Tyson Fury? Boy, I tell you what, you know, I just get to, they'll knock him down, about knock him out, and he'll roll his eyes around and get up and go again. Amen? That's what we ought to do with God. You get knocked down and knocked out, just roll your eyes a little bit, bounce around, and jump up and swing again. Amen? Here's a man that, whip, I mean, slew eight, the Bible's not lying. This ain't a story. This ain't a funny tale. He slew 800 men in one battle by himself. We need some soldiers like that. Amen. Amen. We need some soldiers like that. I believe he was rattled and I believe he was reckless. But I believe he was rugged. Amen. I don't believe he came in there with a tie, <laughs> tie on the suit. He came in there to do business. Amen. So I don't tell you that I want to challenge you. I thank God for the Dinos in this church. I mean, some of you may not have all the verses quoted just right. And you may not do everything, but you'll swing the sword and you're out there trying to do something for God. You ain't got to be, I'll tell you what, we need some reckless, rugged men that'll rattle the cage of the devil. Amen. I'll tell you what, that old line, I like to walk up and poke my spear at him. Amen. Let's see if I can get him stirred up. We don't need to let the devil sleep in this part of the country. Amen. We need to rattle him up and we need some Medino. So you don't want you to pick out who you want to be tonight. Amen. Pick out who you want to be. You want to be an Adino? Then we come down to the next guy. And the Bible said in verse number nine, and after him was Eleazar, the son of Dodo. Now this guy's name is Eleazar, but he's got a daddy named Dodo. Now how many's ever heard me say Dodo in my message? 
it's biblical. There's a man named Dodo. <laughs> but I wouldn't name my boy Dodo. You know, <laughs> Dodo. <laughs> I just, I don't like that name. Amen. That, that's for, that's when they've done wrong. Hey, Dodo, quit that. But anyway, Eleazar's daddy was named Dodo. But I like this Eleazar. And the Bible said the Hohite, one of the three mighty men with David, when he defied the Philistines. Do you know something God wants you to do is defy the Philistines. Amen. Somebody needs to say something. Amen. Somebody needs to say that ain't right. Amen. Somebody needs to say we're not doing that and we're not going there and that ain't happening around here. We need some Eleazars that are the mighty men of God with David and defy the Philistines. And they were gathered together to battle and the men of Israel were gone away. Now I'm going to tell you something you're going to start picking up here real quick. That the mighty men of God never waited for the rest of the army to get there. Sometimes you've got to fight because they ain't coming for a while or they're not coming at all. And if you're going to be a soldier of the cross, by the way, Christian people are called a lot of things in the Bible sheep and so far. But I tell you, in the New Testament, one of the big ones, they're called as soldiers of the cross. The old song says, am I a soldier of the cross, a follower of the Lamb? That must I go in empty handed. And I'm telling you something right now. Paul said, fight the good fight of faith. Endure hardness as a good soldier of the cross. All this passage of scripture, you can take it straight up to the books of 1 and 2 Timothy. And I'll tell you, Paul was a soldier of the cross. Amen. And so anyway, we have Eleazar. He's uh, he down there. He defies the Philistines that were gathered together. And the men of Israel were going away. And he said, well, he said, there ain't nobody here. But he said, I'm going to get up anyway. Look what it said. He arose. Amen. Well, it, now listen. You said, what's that got to? Did you know that we have a song? He arose. He arose. What's he working with? Well, the first man, he's going to lift up Jesus. He's got his spear. Amen. The word of God. This guy here is going to, he's going to emphasize the resurrection. Did you know if you take the, the resurrection and the power of God, the death, the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we need to preach the resurrection. Amen. I want to tell you something. Not only that, but that's why you need to have a resurrection life. You cannot defy a resurrection. See what? Man, they, they wanted to seal up that tomb. They bought off the soldiers. They want anybody to know he rose from the dead. Why? Because there's power. If a man raised from the dead, there's power there. And if you live a resurrected life, with Christ risen in you, there's power in that. And this man, he arose. Amen. That speaks of the resurrection. And he smote the Philistines until his hands were weary. <laughs> I love this one. Amen. Here, old Eleazar, he's got his sword in his hand. And I tell you, he's a slashing and a cutting and a slashing and a cutting and a slashing and a cutting. And all day long, he's going. And when he got done, Brother Brent, his hand, the Bible says, read your Bible, clave to the sword. It literally stuck in his hand. I want to tell you something. You need to get a hold of the word of God and it's where it is. It can't fall out of your hand. Amen. I don't tell you, we need to have a hold of the word of God. He swung that thing. Look what happened to this man. I'll tell you what, this excites me. Amen. <laughs> Woo! He said there, his hand was weary. His hand clayed to the sword. I mean, it got stuck to his hand. Yeah. That's what we need is some men of God who's got the word of God stuck to him. He don't fall off and fall out and fiddle out. The old Bible stuck to him, amen. They speak as of the oracles of God. Then the Bible said, what happened? The Lord wrought a great victory. Now I'll tell you something. If you want to see God do something, just get in the battle for him. Just get in the battle for him. You get in the battle, God will see about the victory. Remember David? David said, I'll tell you what, I always get tickled about them guys sitting up on the hillside. Oh my, oh my, we all need to get him. We need to get him. We need to, I want to tell you what, mind me of Washington, D.C., they sit up there and talk and do nothing. Amen? Amen. A lot of churches sitting around up on the hillside talking and doing nothing about Goliath down there. I want to tell you something, we need to be like David. You know what David knew? The battle is the Lord's. And God brought a great victory. And if people will stand and people will fight and swing that sword, I'm telling you something, you'll see God brought a great victory. I believe, I believe with all my heart that God Almighty had people waiting at the door on the street this week because people went out with the sword over at Ava, Missouri and covered that town. And God said, I'm going to give you some souls 
and the Lord has already wrought a great victory in Abel with four people saved. I'm telling you something, I'm happy about it, amen. I mean, if we don't have one soul saved in that tent, it's already been a resounding victory for God Almighty. Amen. I'm telling you something tonight, we need to realize, get that sword. I don't tell you what, I'm kind of, I can't hardly wait to hear him preach, amen. I don't sit back here, I, I, I'm going to be like old Beagle Dog. Roar, 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 roar. I'm going to sick him, amen. I'm going to help them boys preach tonight. Do you know something in our churches again? Your kids won't think church is dull if you'll say amen once in a while. You get involved in it once in a while. Flag your hand once in a while. And your kids might think you're getting like Reg Kelly, a fanatic, if you jump and run once in a while. Jump up and preach. Say, bless God, preach it, brother. Amen. 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 I'll tell you, you need to fire them up, amen. I'll tell you right now, when you get in the battle, I'll tell you something right now. I've been in the battle 41 years. I'll tell you something right now. It's real. It's real. And I'll tell you something. I like somebody to fire me up and help me out a little bit. Amen. I'll tell you right now. Sick them. Amen. Bite them. I used to have an old three-legged dog named Rastus. Oh, wire. An old Rastus, right hind leg. I mean, the muscles that big. He could run with a truck. Oh, Rastus got this. Rastus really didn't like to get cows, but he would. If you sicked him hard enough, I'd say sick of Rastus. And what he liked was for you to talk to him. He liked for you to communicate with him. Pay a little attention to him. I don't tell you something. Why say you wives need to say sick him to your husband. Amen. Put a little fire in your life. Amen. Well, I don't know where that came from. But anyway. Oh, Eliezer, look what he did. It said there that his hand was weary. And his hand claimed the sword. And what happened? The Lord wrought a great victory. And look what happened now. The people returned after him only to spoil. Everybody said, bless God, that little boy had a whoop. He whooped them guys. Well, let's go up there and get involved in it now. <laughs> did, you, did you know that if this church will fight the battle, there'll be people want to come and get involved in what God's doing? I want to tell you the honest truth tonight. Jim, you're sitting here, drove up here from Shell, not Missouri. We was in the car the other day and we was praying. And I'll tell you, I'll never forget what you prayed as long as I live. And you probably don't think nothing about it. But Jim, Bob prayed, Jim prayed, I prayed. And, and Jim prayed and he said, Lord, he said, I just want to thank you that I'm with some people trying to do something. Trying to do what you said to do to go into all the world and preach the gospel. Amen. I'll tell you, that stuck with me. And it reminded me that people are interested in getting something done. Who wants to go to a church where they're going to sit there like not on a log for 40 years and do nothing, talk to nobody, go nowhere, say nothing to nobody? I'll tell you something. I want to be where they're slinging the sword at. Amen. I'll tell you what. We may not be good at it, but I can sling it. Amen. I'll tell you. Then the people came to the fault. Now that tells me that he was a man who rallied the people. Did you know people need to be rallied? Every once in a while, you need to rally the troops. Amen. What was Eisenhower doing when he wrote in that letter? What was he doing when he talked to those men? I would tell you what, when you're in a battle, sometimes you need to be rallied. Sometimes you need somebody to say, we can win. Let's go. Don't go backward. Let's go forward. Let's go on for God. Rally him up. Amen. Rally him up. What do you think they have cheerleaders at a ball game for? Now, I preach against cheerleaders. I... <laughs> You want to let your daughter go out there and show her underwear everywhere, help yourself, I guess. You want to whore your daughter. But there's a reason they have them out there. They're trying to rally the team. I remember when I used to coach some. The guys that have some bad plays get behind 10, 15 points and seem like they couldn't do nothing right. And you'd get them over there. I'd tell you, I'd grab myself. I'm going to tell you something right now. I'm going to put some fire in your backside right now. I'm, you can do better than this. Amen. These, you can whoop them guys. And you know, and, and they may go out there and somebody shoot a three pointer and hit it. There's nothing like rallying people by winning. Yep. I told somebody today, and I, I'm off on, I'm just floating around here now. I like boxing. I know that's wicked. I know it's sinful, but I like boxing. I don't like anybody hitting me, but I like to watch other people hit them. <laughs> now, and I will tell you something I can't take, and that's a boxer who won't hit back. Make me sick. They swing at me, I'm going to swing back at you. I'm going to tell you right now, and I like a boxer that'll box. You see, in church, What's happening is we've curled up in the corner and the devil's just beating the snot out of us. Upcuts, gut punches, head punches, knocking us crazy. And we're curled up in the corner saying, oh, please, Jesus, come. Oh, please, Jesus. Hey, he'll come on his time. But we're to occupy and fight the fight till he gets here. Amen. 
And I'll tell you what you need to do is just, I mean, curl up a little bit and come it up with an uppercut to the devil and say, I'm not going to sit here and take this beating all night long. I have the weapons of warfare. I've got God Almighty. And if God be for me, who in the world can be against me? Amen. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. The battle is the Lord's. And if it's the battle is the Lord's, it's won. Amen. Amen. You want to be a mighty man for God? Get your head on straight. Quit curling up in the corner. Get out and do something. Go by that track rack tonight and pick you up three tracks. And say, bless God, I'm going to fire the gun this week. Yes. Amen. Amen. I'll tell you what, Jim. Jim, you shouldn't have come tonight. I'm preaching on it. We got done the other day. And he had about, what, 12, 15 of those Roman books left. Yeah. And so he went to Casey's. And he asked him if he could put them on the counter. And they said, no, can't let you do that. Well, Jim just curled up in the corner. <laughs> and he said, I'm hooked. <laughs> no, you know what he did? He went out in the parking lot and the gas pumps and got rid of all of them. <laughs> Amen. 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 I'm going to tell you something. That I'm talking about get out there and swing the sword. Amen. And you'll never know to eternity probably somebody that may get saved or somebody's life may be turned around. That seed was planted there. And God the Holy Ghost can use that seed when it's planted in somebody's heart. I'm telling you, Eleazar rallied the troops. He, he, he regained the place. He recouped the ground. He recovered them. Now, I'm going to get down now to my buddy. Next guy, number three is Shamal. Shamal. He's the third man. Now, Ronnie Simpson's got a message called Fat Man in the Pea Patch. <laughs> now, what? read the story. After him, a Shammah, the son of A.G., the Herorite, and the Philistines were together together in a troop where there was a piece of ground full of lentils. Now, what's lentils? It's peas or beans or something like that. <laughs> Shammah means plump. <laughs> That's what it means. He pumped. He big old boy. Probably had a belly on him. <laughs> yeah, you're too woke for that, aren't you? <laughs> I'll tell you what. And old Shamal, I, I, I just see him. He is a class. In my mind, here's Shamal. He come up there. He drove an old 65 Chevrolet pickup truck, Danny, up to church. Got out with his overhauls on, belly sticking out here. Got a space where the horse steering wheel's been rubbing them overhauls. He broke his shoes on. Had said, where's them Mar Phillips listings at? <laughs> I want Adam. <laughs> He didn't come in there with a set of Bermuda shorts on yeah. and a Hawaiian shirt and say, where, where is the conflict? <laughs> <laughs> he said, let me know where them North Flintstones is at and I'll get them, Brother Jerry. He said, Red, you need some help. I had a man walk by me today out of this church and stopped and said, we're with you. I'm behind you. I'll be, and we mean it. Yeah. That meant something to me. Yeah. That meant something to me. Yeah. Boy, I'll tell you something. Old Shammah. I tell you what, I, I say, first of all, he's round. He has some weight to him, amen. That's, that's what his name is, Plump. And old Shammah, son of A.G. the Herod, the Philistines are gathered together in the troop. There's a bunch of these rascals. Whole pile of them up together. And I don't know really what happened, but I let my imagination run a little bit wild here. And I, maybe somebody come down and said, hey, Shammah, yeah, what should he had a bunch of Philistines up there in the pea pass. Said, we ain't going to have no beans for wintertime. Somebody don't get up there and take care of that bunch. Said, they're trampling it down. By the way, this is a picture now. This is a picture. The lentils was their food. And the devil's crowd will come in and trample the word of God. Ruin the, ruin the feed of the children of God where there ain't nothing to eat. No, Shammah jumped up and said, they're not going to keep me starving this winter. <laughs> they... Them stinking Philistines, and he run up there in his old brogan boots and his overhauls. And watch what he does. Boy, I like what he did. Where there's a piece of ground full of lentils, and the people fled from the Philistines. Everybody else is running from him. But he stood. Now, North, you tell me what the next phrase is. Does anybody know where that phrase is at the Bible? Tell me, Josh. In the midst. In the midst. It's in the Garden of Eden. And it's at Calvary. And Jesus Christ is always in the midst. 
in the candlesticks of Revelation, the churches, he was in the midst. Do you know what? This one, the girl, this one of the most wonderful picture stories in the Bible. Here's an old boy who doesn't have a college education. <laughs> he never been to the cemetery. <laughs> he, he's not sure where Hezekiah, where Hezekiah, the book of Hezekiah is in the Bible at. <laughs> Y'all didn't get that, did you? There ain't no book called Hezekiah in the Bible. He might think there is, though. But I'll tell you what, he's ready to fight. Yeah. And he comes up there, and I'll tell you what he did. The Bible said he stood in the midst. Now watch this. If you want to have victory in your life, you stand on the ground of Calvary. Amen. The victory for the child of God is always standing upon the finished work of Jesus Christ. Standing in the midst of the finished work of redemption. And God will give you a victory. Boy, I'll tell you what. That old boy, I don't know. He met, I don't know what he come out there with. You, let's, read, let's read the passage of scripture. He said he stood in the midst of the ground and defended it and slew the Philistines. And look what happened. What? The Lord wrought a great victory. Now I want to back up here just a minute and talk about something. The piece of ground. The Bible said neither give place to the devil. Oh, 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 uh, Shammah said that ain't their ground. That's God. That's my king's ground. See, David's a picture of Christ. He said, that don't belong to them Philistines. He said, that piece of ground belongs to God. And he went up there in the middle of that ground and the Bible said he stood. I'm going to tell you something about standing. Boy, I'll tell you right now. Just run real quick. Standing is one of the biggest issues in the Bible for the crowd of God. Standing. Romans 5, 2 said, this faith and into this grace wherein we stand. The Bible teaches that you and I stand in grace. Amen. Romans 14, 4 says that God is make, makes us stand. Amen. Romans 15 tells us that we're to stand in the gospel. That's exactly what Shammah was doing. Amen. Standing in the midst of that ground. Amen. 1 Corinthians 6, 16, 13 said, Quit yourselves as men and stand fast in the faith. Amen. You know what stand fast means? How many ever had your mama get fastened on to you? I don't tell you, my, my mama fastened on to you, it's fastened on to. That means you get a fastener. It's a step, hold it on. We're to stand fast. We're not to move. We're not to let go. What was that guy doing with the sword? He claimed to his hand, fastened to his hand. There's some things God wants you to hold on to, no matter what it looks like. He said there, stand fast in Galatians 5, 1. He said, stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. He said in 2 Corinthians 1, 24, by faith you stand. In Ephesians chapter 6 and in verse number 11, the Bible said, having done all, do what? Stand. Then he said, do what? Stand. Having your loins girded about with truth. You know what we need in this country? It's some shamas that will stand. I'm telling you tonight, we need some standing. We need to quit running from the fight and charge into the fight and stand for God. Amen. I'm going to tell you something. I was talking to you this morning about this battle I had this week. I'm going to tell you, I knew if I stood against that, I knew it was coming. But I'll tell you what, God said, get in the pea patch. Get in the pea patch. Amen. And I'll tell you something, we need the Bible teaches us in, in Philippians 1 24. It says, stand fast in one spirit. That means God wants us to stand together. Amen. Amen. The Bible said in Philippians 4 1 that we're to stand fast in the Lord. In Colossians 4 12, it said we're to stand perfect and complete in Christ. In 1 Thessalonians 3 8, we're to stand in the Lord. In 2 Thessalonians 2 15, stand fast. In 1 Peter 5 12, we're to the, the, the true grace of God wherein you stand. In 1 Corinthians 10 12, watch this. Let him that standeth take heed lest he fall. God does not want you to be proud about your standing. God wants you to give him glory when you stand. The Bible said in Proverbs 19, 21, the counsel of the Lord that shall stand. The Bible said in Psalms 1, where not to stand. Now I'm going to tell you the big issue of America today. You know why the church has lost its savor? Because we could stand them. We need to stand. I love old Shammah. It said he stood in the midst of the ground. Now what's the ground? I'm going to tell you something right now. The ground of your home. The ground of your heart. Neither give place to the devil. Don't give the devil any ground. The, the ground of your family. The ground of truth. The ground of righteousness. The ground of the word of God. 
God wants us to stand in the midst of the ground and defend it. I'm telling you right now, if the Christians in America would just start standing. Amen. The Lord, verse number 12 said he wrought a great victory. But I want to tell you something right now. We need to stand in the midst of Calvary. The book of Acts tells us about Paul and Peter standing. In the book of Genesis 19, I want to tell you something. Are you listening? To this? I caught this afternoon, never caught it before in my life. I was studying. I preached out of Genesis 19 today. And the, guess what the first mention of stand is in the Bible? And boy, do you ever get a message here? It's in that chapter. And it was quoted by the Sodomites. And here's what they said, brother. Stand back. Mm -hmm. Don't stand. Amen. What's the Holy Ghost trying to tell us? Stand. stand. And don't let this worldly crowd tell you to stand back. That's going on right now all over this country. Stand back. You stand back, church. You Christians, you stand back while we take over this country. Now, I'm going to tell you something. We need to stand at the place we work. We need to stand everywhere. Yeah. There ain't no particular place God said. God said, you claim that ground for me and you stand there and you defend that ground. And I'll tell you, if there's anything God's teaching us tonight out of this is do not stand back. Don't let that worldly crowd tell us to back up. Amen. You stand. Now, here we go. A little bit of fun time. How many people in this church knows a feller by the name of Butterbean? Amen. Not too many people. Well, y'all need to go home and look up on the internet. Butterbean. Butterbean looks like Shamal. He, doesn't he? How, how big around is Butterbean? They call him Butterbean because he looks like a Butterbean. That's his nickname. He's, he's about that big around, right? About that tall. And here comes these big boxers in. And he's like, they look at him like, this is going to be quick. And they hit Butterbean. He goes, boom. <laughs> and then Butterbean just starts edging toward him. And he takes him a while because his legs don't move like everybody else's. Right. Right. And he keeps that. Am I telling the truth or not? And he backs him up to the to the ring side. And then he comes and he's got an arm about that. Wait, his arm's bigger than my legs. Yeah, facts. And buddy, I want to tell you something. He's is he not a knockout artist? A knockout. He is a knockout artist. And you don't, his little short arms, his little butterbean arms. See, he knows he's got, he can't reach you 75 <laughs> inches out there. He's got to get about 32 inches away from your head. Yeah. But if he can get 32 inches close to your face, you're in trouble. You're and they know it. Yep. Everybody's seen him box. He's, he's retired now. He has butterbean restaurants now. Yeah. Made enough money boxing that he started a restaurant chain. <laughs> but old butterbean, he's beating the thing you ever seen. Yeah. He just looked like, well, that guy can't waddle across the, the ring, much less hit anybody. But, oh, he is a sham -all. He is a sham -all. And he will stand, and, and you'll think, you're, and he don't back up. They hit him, he goes, hit him, hit him. Yeah. <laughs> he just keeps coming, hit him. Yeah. You know, and every once in a while, you'll see his eyes roll a little bit, that and hurt a little bit. And, he, <laughs> and then he just gets, and you see his arms start doing this. And about the time he gets you within 32, about 32 inches, flop. <laughs> they go to Lulu land. They go to sleep. Yes. <laughs> I, said, I was getting this message together. And I said, I ought to name this message Butterbean. Amen. <laughs> oh, Butterbean. Oh, Shema, put them out. Amen. But I'll tell you something. You know what that tells me? God don't need fancy people. Amen. God just needs old common men to get out and do the job. Amen. Amen. As I said, I'll take, uh, anyway, I got, I got to get off all that stuff. What did I do with my, does anybody know what, I, there's my glasses right there. <clears throat> all righty. Well, we got another guy or two and we go home. I love this scene. Now we going down to verse 13. Now you look at this. The three of the 30 chief went down and came to David in harvest time under the cave of Adullam. Now this time in David's life was a dark, dark time. You're going through a hard time. This situation with Saul and all that is bad. No, David in verse 15, he longed and said, Oh, that one would give me a drink of water out of the well of Bethlehem. Does anybody know where David was from? In Bethlehem, the house of bread. Boy, he said, I'd like to have a drink out of the well back home. Those three mighty men heard this. I want you to see what they did. Verse 16. And the three mighty men. And I'm supposing that this is Adino, <laughs> Eleazar, and Butterbean. <laughs> yeah. 
Shema. <laughs> Lord, forgive me. If I, I don't mean to make little of the Labate, I get a kick out of it. Amen. Uh, boy, I tell you, I, anyway. And the three mighty, and it said, they, David was said, man, I'm thirsty. Boy, I, I, you know, I need some refreshment. And the three mighty men did something. They broke through the host of the Philistines and drew water out of the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate and took it and brought it to David. Man. See, the problem was the house of bread was surrounded by the Philistines. Bad deal. Couldn't nobody get no spiritual drink. Couldn't nobody get no spiritual food. The Philistines had it controlled. Pitcher. No, David said, boy, I tell you. I'd like to have something from God. David even talks in the Psalms how he thirsted as the heart panteth after the water. And these old three guys, they got the vision and we said, you know, David, he's, he's thirsty. And why don't we have us some fun? And let's go down to Bethlehem. Just three of us. And they're heading off down toward Bethlehem. Here comes old Butterbean. <laughs> and they get down there and there's a wall of Philistines guarding the granaries guarding the city and guarding the water and saying ain't nobody getting a drink from God this is a picture folks of spiritual condition in this country but your Bible said those three men did something I believe, I believe old Eleazar said, Butterbean, you go first. <laughs> old Butterbean looked up and said, let's get them. And they came, and I'll tell you what I believe, they pulled out their swords. And I believe old Butterbean and Eleazar walked up and said, you guys don't get out of the way from that well, I'll slice your head off like a watermelon. I'll tell you what, I'm not joking. You get out of the way from that well. And those Philistines said, you know who this is? He says, do you know that guy? No, I don't know who, who he is. His name's Dino. He killed 800 of us in one day by himself. Yeah. <laughs> do you know this other guy? No, I don't know who he is. Oh, and he slew a whole pile of us. And they said, and you know what happened? These guys knew they were monkeying with. They were monkeying with men who love God, right. who had the sword of the spirit and the power of God in their life. Yeah. And then the last one says, you know who that little short guy is? That big round boy? He said, oh yeah, I know who he is. His name's Shamo. They call him Butterbean. <laughs> and he's the meanest of the bunch. He stood one day in the midst of the ground and slew a whole troop of Philistines by himself. Yes. And old Butterbean walked up in that well. They on one side and the Dino on the other. And they said, get out of the way from that well. Our king's thirsty. He needs a drink of water. Yes. And we're getting it. Man, them Philistines, they, I mean, they started running off over 50, 60 feet away. And there's, and, and that once in a while, one of them kind of crawled up. They said, you get back. There won't be nothing left of you. <laughs> I don't know which one of them took a bucket. Put it on, glug, 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 down the water it went. And they pulled it back up, popped the lid on that thing, said, let's go take this to David. And David was so humbled. By them men risking their lives and standing with him. They said this is like their blood. They, they, they was willing to shed their blood. And I want to tell you something. If you want to see God do something, you give a church men who are willing to risk their lives for the cause of Jesus Christ. Did you know that's what the disciples did? Willing to risk everything that this world has to offer. And even in death. And by the way, the trail of Christian faith is tracked in the blood of the saints. Amen. Amen. That's right. Man alive, it's, is it 930? <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to get some of you excited. <laughs> David poured that water out. He wouldn't even drink it. It was so sacred. Verse 17 says, and he said, be it far from me, O Lord, that I should do this. Is not this the blood of the men that went in jeopardy of their lives? That old song says, am I a soldier of the cross, a follower of the Lamb? It talks about, must I, you know, go in on flowery beds of ease while others shed their blood? Therefore, we would not drink it. These things did the three mighty men. 
We're going to finish up here these next two. Here's Old Abishai in verse 18. The brother Joab, the son of Zeruiah, was chief among three, and he lifted up a spear against 300 and slew them and had the name among them, among the three. <laughs> I think these guys tough, buddy. Verse 19, was he not most honorable of the three? Therefore, he was their captain, howbeit he attained not unto the first three. And Beniah, the son of Jehoiada, the son of a valiant man of Kabzeel, who had done many acts. Watch this, folks. He slew two lion-like men. Two lion-like men. Now, I do not know what those men look like, but it says lion-like. First of all, that tells me they were, they were quite the characters. And they were out there for battle. It's a picture of close quarter combat with the devil. And he slew the lion in the midst of the pit in the time of snow. And how I would love to preach on that. How many has ever been in the pit? In the time of snow? Cold in your life. You're in a pit. And Satan's coming in after you. Did you know that your Savior will give you the ability to slay the devil in the sense of spiritual warfare? Even when it's time of snow cold and you're in a pit we are more than overcomers through him that loved us when are we going to start believing it Amen. they that be for us are more than they that be against us and if God be for us who can be against us verse number 21 says and he slew an Egyptian a goodly man the Egyptian had a spear in his hand but he went down to him with a staff <laughs> he took an old shepherd's staff said you little punk Philistine <laughs> he went down to him with staff and plucked the spear out of the Egyptian hands and slew him with his own spear <laughs> brother Brett these guys knocked me out man I mean I'm, I'm talking about warriors now this guy's down there and they run, he runs up on him grabs his own spear, his staff out of his hand gets, knocks him Lulu and kills him and takes his own spear and kills him Men, quit yourselves like men and be strong in the faith. Amen. I want to encourage. Now, let me say this to you. And we're going to close. I've been doing a lot of thinking, praying, wondering what God's doing here. Oh, how good the Wednesday night preaching has been. Man, oh man, have we heard some messages. They have been so good. And you know, the common thought is, well, somebody gets called to preach and maybe they go start a church or take a church. And by the way, I have a church in Philadelphia that's open. I got contacted this week. If somebody's interested, get a hold of me. Um, don't have a pastor. Authorized version church. No pastor. Uh, looking for somebody. But we often think in terms of that, that maybe they're called to preach and so they're going to start a church. Or they're going to go fill a pulpit somewhere. And that doesn't seem to be what's happening around here. And I'm saying, Lord, what's going on? I mean, pretty soon there ain't going to be enough weeks in the year to get them all preached once. <laughs> and today I think I got a little answer. Maybe. I ain't saying for sure. But you know what I think? I think this church is kind of like headquarters for the army. Yeah. Pentagon. Amen. And we're sending generals out. Sending soldiers out. Yeah. I, I don't know. But I want to know because I want to know the will of the Lord and I, I, I don't want to make any missteps. But I, I, I'll be honest with you, I ain't never seen nothing like it in pastoring here 40 years. I've never seen anything like what's going on. Without any prompting from their pastor, from young people to 80-year-old men, wanting to go out and do something for God. Amen. There are preachers who would give their left eye to have men in their church that's doing what's happening in this church. Now let me tell everybody this. If we think for one second that Satan is not going to throw everything hell's got at us, we're kidding ourselves. Now you just get ready. He'll do everything. He'll try to divide us. He'll try to create animosity between some of these men. 
jealousy or envy or spite or stuff like that. I don't know how he'll come, but that's the kind of stuff he will try to do. In this evening, as I was just meditating on all these things, that God just directed me to this passage of scripture about these men who were doing something for God. They were standing, they were fighting, and they were making a difference. And guys, I want to tell you something. I don't know exactly what God's doing. But I hope that this church can be a place where you can come, get a lot of ammunition, <laughs> get some gasoline for your tank, <laughs> get you a new gun if you need one, get your sword sharpened up, and also get you some rest and encouragement Amen. to go out and do battle again. I don't know what God's doing, but Jim told me <laughs> he got done. He, Bob and Jim, see, I... This was the old man's club, right, Bob? <laughs> Brother Michael, I was standing there with him and the other night over there, and here comes, here comes Bob. And then here comes this little red bug down the hill. It says it's supposed to be a car, but it's a bug. <laughs> right, Jim? <laughs> he don't like me talking about his car. Roller skate. Roller skate, okay. <laughs> okay, roller skate on steroids. And so... Michael kind of looked at me and he goes, good land, look, look at these older guys showing up. What am I going to do with them? I said, I'll take them. It'll be the old man's club. <laughs> and I got so tickled. These, both these men got in my truck. I had my deal that was, you know, marked out to go. And the first thing they did going up the street, they said, what do we do? What do we do? We ain't never done this before. <laughs> what do we say? Amen. Amen. They said, have you ever done this before? I said, oh yeah, I've done a lot of this. Let me just tell you a little story that the Lord dealt with me this week. When I was 16 years old, my daddy ran for state representative and had a Taney County involved in it. And that whole summer I spent knocking on doors. I started when I was 16 years old. And I learned that you usually don't get shot. Usually. Usually. When I was uh, in church... Before I ever got saved, I'd hear people talk, maybe doing a little visitation. They said, well, now you will get door slammed in your face now, and you're going to, get, going to get cussed out now. Can I tell you something? I've knocked on thousands of doors, and I don't think I've ever been cussed out. I told these men, I said, Reggie, what do we do? I said, I don't tell you what you do. You walk up, now listen to me, you walk up that door, you ring that doorbell, you knock. I said, you put a smile on your face, or at least a pleasant look. And I said, and they open that door and say, I can help you. I said, you tell them who you are. And what you're doing there. Don't make them guess. Be straight, gun barrel straight right up front. And then you hand them that John and Gospel and that invitation, that flyer. And you say, we're having a revival down here starting Monday night to, at the park. And we wanted to ask you to come. And I said, if the Lord opens the door for further conversation, great. But if you can sense they're not interested, that's all. you've done a wonderful thing getting that done. They got back in the truck the other night, and I never seen two old men. Is that all right if I call you old men? Is that okay? How old are you, Jim? Too old. Too old. Too old. You're bumping 80. I know that, ain't you? I'll be 80 in November. Be 80 in November. How old are you, Jim? Bob? Huh? 85. 85. Oh, wow. <clears throat> These guys worked a great big, two great big apartment complexes. Come back and change their shoes. One <laughs> did I... But you know what? They came back. They were so excited. Amen. They were so excited. We started up. To, we prayed and asked God to bless their work. And, and <laughs> Jim says, we're bringing that tent to Shell Knob. <laughs> he says, you bring that tent to Shell Knob. He said, I'll knock on every door in that town. <laughs> Amen. 80-year-old man. And what I'm telling you is this. You know, what if God is saying to this church, this is going to kind of be general headquarters. We're going to send the troops out. And the generals, we're going to go out. And, and I don't know. Because, you know, I got to think about this. What if I was in the ministry like that? And wouldn't it be good to have a place to come to yeah. where I could be an arm around me once in a while and good fellowship and not be worrying about the service? And I don't know. I don't know what God's doing. But I'm just telling you this. I'm excited. I'll be 70 in October, and I'm probably the most excited I've ever been about serving God. And I want to say to the young men of this church, I heard about a young man who broke down in tears this week on visitation. You know what, Brett, God told me this week? 
I, he, he didn't write it in the sky and he wasn't all the He said, now, Reggie, you've went out and campaigned a lot of people politically and have a lot of doors. It ain't going to hurt you to just hit a few doors for me. Yeah. 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 So I want to encourage you this week. Do something for God. Grab your two or three tracks. Pray. We need people praying. Amen. Amen. We need, you know, any good army's got to have a lot of people behind the scenes doing things. Do we have a gentleman from Canada with us tonight? Right there? Sir, I want to tell you, I'm glad you're here. I want to encourage you in the Lord. How long have you been listening? Uh, got, uh, show me your uh, YouTube channel probably about, what, a year ago or something? Right around COVID, I think. Around COVID time, whatever, yeah. something like that. Yeah. And he came to church tonight to be here in church with yeah. us. been listening for a long time. Yeah. I want you, welcome to Hillbilly Land. <laughs> All right. People are friendly here. Hillbilly Land, that's any day. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, let's stand. I heard an old, old story How Satan came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about his groanings Of his precious blood tonight to let you go without saying something. Van, I need you to plug your ears. Would you please plug your ears for, for a little bit? <laughs> Van just got out of Camp Joy. Van, how many was saved at camp this year? Do you know? Around 12 saved at Camp Joy this year. And you know the church is not directly connected with Camp Joy, but a lot of people help and work here from camp. And that's his ministry. And that's his labor. And I'm just telling you, it doesn't have to be just our church. You know, I, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I drove by a church this week and, and something that I'd, had happened and I, I just didn't have the best feeling when I drove by it. And boy, the Holy Spirit quickened me and said, you don't think like that. You pray for that church. You pray for that church. And boy, I tell you what, that was a blessing. Just to, you know, we need to pray for other ministries that God, there's people, other people reach. We can't even start to reach. But I love you tonight. I want to encourage you and get in the fight, get in the battle. And boy, I tell you what, let's be there tomorrow evening and let's be encouraging and let's be enthused and prayed up and ready for God to do something. Brother Randy. I'm going down to help Brother Mike set up the tent. And he said he could use a lot of help. Brother Mike, I forgot to announce that. Uh, they should talk to him if you could help. They need help tomorrow. Big day setting tent up, setting the platform up, chairs up. I mean, it's a lot of work. Please, if you can at all, uh, get a hold of Mike right now after church and let him know when and what time so, he, so you know what time they'll be there and so forth and what needs to be done. All righty. Lord, we thank you for this evening. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the word of God. Thank you, Lord, for the record of these mighty men. Lord, who just, Lord, stood and did what they could do and you used them greatly and you wrought great victories through them. Lord, I thank you for the men of this church. Lord, for the families, the homes, and I pray that you'll encourage them, God. Lord, that with God all things are possible. Lord, we pray for the meeting tomorrow night, that your power would be there, that your presence and sweetness would be there. Lord, may there be a wonderful, sweet spirit there. We pray, God, that you would guard against any satanic uh, invasions or distractions or trouble that he might try to bring. And Lord, if anything comes up, help us to handle it with grace. But Lord, we expect your presence to be there. And we pray that you'd save people and help us, God, to have a heart for people. And Lord, I just pray, draw with your spirit tomorrow night from across the area, people under that tent, 
And God bless Brother Michael as he preaches. And Lord, Brother Josh this week and, and Brother Terry and Lord, all who may preach and those who give testimonies. And I pray, Lord, that everything would bring glory and honor to your holy name. And God, we just ask you to help us stand in the midst of the ground. And Lord, to do, having done all to stand. We love you. We thank you for this wonderful day that you've given us, Lord. It's been so good. Lord, bless these homes and these people in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. We'll see you tomorrow night, Lord willing.